there is an expression that has been quoted and misquoted by many people over the years. An expression that goes all the way back to the Greek philosopher Aristotle. And it is the observation that the wheels of God move slowly, but they move steadily. And simply stated, everyone and everything in this world is subject to the wheels of time. And so over the course of time, God will make all things right. And he will punish those who have rejected his offer of salvation through his son. And he will bring upon them everlasting judgment. So it is foolish to fight against him because we can't outlast God. And as we come to Psalm 47, we have come to a time, to a day, when he has made all things right. The time when the Lord Jesus Christ returns to this earth to rule and to reign forever. A day, a future day that is perhaps not too far away. At the end of seven years of ca catastrophic tribulation on this earth, when those who have rejected Christ have been removed from this earth, those who belong to him will come together. And as Jesus once again descends to this earth from the glory of heaven and he ascends to his throne, in Jerusalem. And what a day that will be. And so in verse 1 of Psalm 47, the psalmist says to those of us who belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, on that day, here is what you are to do. Clap your hands and celebrate all you people Make a joyful noise and, and shout to the Lord, our God, and praise his holy name with a voice of triumph. Cry out to him and let us sing songs of joy. Ruinah in Hebrew. Let us sing songs of rejoicing. For our deliverance, our deliverer has come. The shepherd of our soul is here. So let us be glad. For the Lord our God most high is the only true God. And now he has been exalted in power and in majesty and in strength. And he is to be feared, it says in verse 2. Yahweh in Hebrew. We should fall down at his feet in reverence and in awe. For it is by his mercy, it's by his grace that we have not been cast into eternal darkness forever. For no one can stand against him and triumph over him, though many people, it seems, try, don't they? So let us worship the Lord our God, who is our Savior, who is a great King, the King of kings and Lord of lords over all of the earth, over all things. 
And when he speaks, it is by the word of his power that he subdues the people who are his enemies. He casts them under us, it says. He shuts down the nations. He restrains them under our feet. Those who have rejected his offer of salvation, who have rejected his sacrifice for us. He has already won the victory for us at the cross. And so like a shepherd who chooses the best pasture for his flock, he chooses our eternal inheritance for us. The excellency of the glory that he has promised to Jacob long ago, whom he loves. He loves us. So we can trust in him to do what is right for us. And so our mouth and our heart overflow with awe and with praise. Sele, it says in Hebrew at the end of verse 4. Pause for a moment. And think about these things. Is that how we live our lives? Our Lord and our God has ascended from the grave in triumph. And someday soon he will ascend to his throne with a shout of victory. And we will see him face. To face. So let us lift up the Lord our God on high with the sound of the trumpet, it says in verse 5, for he is worthy of our praise. Let us not be silent. Let us not be ashamed, but instead let us sing praises to our God. Sing praises to him, it says in verse 6. Give him the praise that he deserves. He never ceases to be good, does he? So we should never cease to be grateful to him. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises for our God is the king over all the earth, over all people, over Jew and over Gentile. Sing praises with a skillful psalm, it says in verse 7. Maskil in Hebrew, with understanding. For he has not hidden these things from us, but in Christ he has revealed the truth to us. So in verse 8, we sing and we say, our God reigns over all of the nations. He reigns over all of the people. And in the end, all in the world will submit to him. For our Lord and our God will sit on his holy throne forever. And even the princes, the psalmist adds, the mighty men of the people who know that they too are just men, they will assemble themselves on that great day and they will bow down before him and celebrate his glory. So we who belong to Christ will all be one in him as the people of God, as the people of the God of Abraham, who by faith believed God and so we too believe, so we are the sons and the daughters of Abraham. Sons and daughters who live by faith, we're told 
in Galatians 3, 7. And as for the leaders of the nations, here's a warning. Here is a warning to them today. They are to be the shields of the earth. They are responsible to protect the people who belong to the Lord God. They are responsible to protect the people in their nations. And so they will be held accountable for that responsibility that they have been given by God. Someday soon, perhaps sooner than later, everything will come to light. There is nothing that is hidden that will not be exposed. And so in the end of verse 9, the psalmist says, Like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter, a new day is dawning. And on that day, Jesus Christ will be highly exalted, and he will be given a name that is above every name. So don't lose heart. Stand firm. Be strong. Be immovable. Be confident that what we do for Christ, no matter how difficult it may be, has eternal value. And so as each day passes by, slowly, steadily, we move one day closer to that great day in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. You've been listening to Bruce David Bell, pastor of Berean Bible Fellowship. If the Lord has ministered to you through this message and you would like more information, then visit us on the web at bbfva.org.